Big, big release from Armour today. Man, like, well done. Congrats. Thank you. Thank you. Functional tracks volume two. Functional tracks, all 160 BPM. The goodness. Loads of, loads of uh, I don't know, loads of like random bits that I've made like the last couple of years. But yeah, I'm feeling um, good, man. Um, this is my hot take for today, yeah? Link's Yard, yeah? If the right rapper gets on there, it's going to be a hit, I'm telling you. Bro, I hope so. Because um, the the feedback I've got from that beat is crazy. Like, people just hitting me up saying, oh, like, the beat's nuts, basically. So You know what it is? So I, I, I got a DM today, and... Um, I've actually already started getting a bidding war for that beat mm. of people being like, I'll pay you this much mm-hmm. to license it. So I, I kind of, yeah, I'm waiting for the right offer right now. One's but, gonna, one's gonna have to raise the price on them. Say, what's the price? It, yeah, what's the price? I don't know, it's, it's weird, because like, the thing is, I've only really started taking the beat thing seriously like the last couple of years. So... I don't know if I if I can keep up like the armor stuff, but also have like this beat alias. I'm just gonna like, I mean, I'm I guess maybe even the next month, just try and like churn out loads of like random beats, drill stuff, whatever, and just send it out. You see where it goes. But there's already three tunes out, but I had to like put a disclaimer on the release saying you you're called to use these for DJing, but if you want to spit over them. Just, just, just get in touch, you know. Just get. In oh touch. yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> They're gonna have to pay up. Yeah, because I can't. I don't know. I don't want to have a have a six nine situation on my case where he just jacks the beat. <laughs> That's a bit of a long situation. Jacks the beat <laughs> and runs away with it. That's yeah, Pete. How, how, how are you guys doing anyway? Yeah, no, no, good as well. Obviously, it was just. Posting up today, there was yeah, quite other than yours. There was quite a lot of releases as well. Obviously, bro, back you, you're, Friday. You're Mister Consistent at the moment. With those posts, you know, bro, literally every day. I, I can't keep up. <laughs> I actually can't, <laughs> can't keep up. I'm <laughs> like, I, I'm like posting on the Instagram. I'm like, oh shit, there's another two. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying to flood the system. That's how you got to do it, man. Bro, you have to. Yeah, you have to. But but yeah. Like obviously it's band camp Friday today, so yeah, it seems like mm. a lot of artists to release music. Yeah, um yeah, support artists today. Um obviously this will be out on Monday, but uh if you don't know, get to know Bandcamp do like a a day every first Friday of the month where they do like a they basically give a hundred percent of revenue to artists. So like it's a perfect day just to go and basically run up people's bank up accounts. So you can basically just, I mean, grab exclusive releases for the day, any previous releases, discographies, anything. And I released today, but there's loads of like great UK artists that have released us artists as well, just like all over the world, basically. Um, so yeah, it's a good way to, um, to get out there. And if you're an artist yourself, get your music on bank camp because it's, the best way to not only get your music out there, but you earn more peace from it because people are always looking for exclusive music on there anyway. So, oh, yeah, 100, 100. Support your eyes, bro. Stop being broke. That's, <laughs> yes. that's the music. Yeah, stop being broke and, and also asking for promo, for like promos after the that, has, that, has that happened yet? Surely. Uh, someone messaged me today saying, Oh, can you send me a promo pack off the release? And I said, Yeah, it's on my bank account. So, you are in there. <laughs> exclusive. exclusive. Man, you got you got to be straight. AC you have course. to, bro. You have to be because I, I I swear it's different if it's like this might sound mad, yeah. But like even if mad. like if a big artist came to me and was like send me the music, I'd be like okay, I'll send it to you. But when it's like someone that I don't really know or like I haven't really spoken to, it's different if it's like you ask me for tunes, yeah, and I'm I'll just send them to you. I don't care. Because you, you're my boy, no. but but if it comes if it comes to like but if it, when it comes to like some random on Instagram or Twitter and they're like, "Oh, can you send it to me? It's for free." And I'm like, "Well, I could, but if you want to actually support I, you could just go on my bank account and get it." <laughs> so, yeah, you saying it's on my bank account is very rude. I like that. <laughs> no, nah, I was more friendly than that. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Oh yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, so if you go, if you pay a fee, I can get you for free. 
No, I, I said thanks afterwards. Oh, you said, oh, uh, Kenny Armour. <laughs> Kenny Armour. Kenny Armour, mood. No, I'm telling you what, I'm running up my Henny funds for when this is all over, man. Don't worry. Oh, Henny, Henny, Henny. Jesus. <laughs> Love Henny, bro. What be for, man? Um, I always say that's the devil's piss, man. That that stuff just. Yeah, but you still drink it. How can you call it that? What the hell? Bro, I, I don't drink that. That's no. definitely Ray and Effie's, bro. <laughs> that's definitely Ray and Effie's. Both of them. But we yeah, discovered but... that um, Denzel's measure for alcohol is a teaspoon. So Yeah, yeah. You don't know how to drink that. You just sort it out immediately. Oh, you know, I'm back on the, the sparkling water. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> sparkling water. For sparkling. <laughs> It's sparkling. Uh, oh, yeah. No, yeah. today, obviously, I wanted to start with a more serious topic. Um, like a week or, or so ago, like a BBC doc dropped um, called uh, Music's Dirty Secrets, Women Fight Back, basically talking about um, artists in the industry that have kind of, yeah, been involved in from sexual assault to domestic violence and yeah it was I can't lie it was it was, it was mad it was mad to watch um obviously the likes of Octavia and Solo 5 were involved and um yeah no nah, it, it was it was crazy to see like I don't know what you guys thoughts on it was uh, I uh, I don't know I feel I feel like as we obviously did the podcast before covering it because I think around that time a lot, a lot of these stories were coming out uh, I mean not just I think this is even before the Octavian stuff um, about certain DJs in the scene being um, accused well I mean it, to me the evidence is out there but a lot of these sexual assault allegations put against them and like posts on Instagram and posts on Twitter and stuff and um, I don't know, man. This stuff has been going on for for too long. It, it it feels like it's only now that, thankfully, you know, girls and women and whoever are basically feeling empowered to actually come out on a big platform, and they're not scared anymore to actually come out about it. I mean, the fact that that stuff happened and it probably went quiet for a long time between it before it actually came out as news and everyone started saying, Oh fuck Octavian, fuck Solo 45 just kind of says it all. And I think this is the problem. I mean, obviously we can get more into the semantics later, but I definitely feel like the problem is, is where the industry is run by mostly men. Mm. You've got this issue that this stuff just kind of goes under the radar and they just kind of go, Oh, it will go away. It's a problem. It will just go away. And actually, you need to address it. And I think having that sort of documentary is quite quite powerful. Um, and hopefully, I don't know, man. I, I just my concern is that it's going to continue to happen. Mm. And the only way we can stop it, and I think again, it's just referring back to that other podcast we did with like Gift and Jazz and myself, is you just have to make sure that you yourself, as a guy, are holding those people to account. That that's the only thing you can do. Yeah, I think that's kind of like it. It's just it's it's just sad that it still kind of happens in the in the industry. But I just think with the like 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 Armour said, just the fact that it's male run and male dominated, you don't really find out it, it to be a safe space for women. So like we like like he like he said, we need to kind of hold each other account. You can't you can't kind of look by it and see it and just kind of be like, oh, well, it is what it is. We kind of need to kind of g-check men that are doing those kind of things because you know a lot of the stories that you hear it's not even like it was even in a um in a quieter place it's always in a, like a public setting. oh yeah yeah, yeah. So there's always someone that would have seen it there's always someone that would have kind of you know could have stepped in but yeah. you know decided not to so i think the main thing is we kind of need to make it a thing where it isn't acceptable you can't really do those things and be accepted by people so but it's good when you have those documentaries I think, you know, Me Too shouldn't really just be a phase. It should be something that, like, like we think about, like, every day in it, like, in an in everyday kind of course of action. So it's kind of good to see documentaries like that still kind of coming out. But I wouldn't say good, obviously, because, you know, things have to happen for those documentaries to go. But 
it's kind of good to have those documentaries. Yeah, that's the, that there's a light being shone on the issue. Basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's I, good to see. Because mm. I, I kind of feel like um, what I was gonna say, you know, no, what I was gonna say is, I kind of feel like as well as more being done, just like G check friends and G check people that we know, it's also, I guess, giving women that platform as well because i feel like this whole thing of obviously it, it, it's still an ongoing case but even like the tory lanes thing that's been going on it's it's how long they can kind of just get away with it mm-hmm. and the, the the fact that octavian was dropped from his label he's definitely lost a lot of support but he's still releasing music mm. It's kind of mad to me. It's almost like saying, yeah, I assault the woman, but I can just continue like nothing happened. And it's like, well, hold on. Surely you should be addressing it. You should actually say, okay, I'm going to go and get the help I need and come back or something like that. At least at least address it like that. Don't deny it. Because people that are that, that narcissistic, don't, they don't think they've actually done yeah. anything wrong. I don't, that's that's the thing. thing. Yeah, I don't think he thinks he did anything wrong because he's still obviously maintaining his innocence, even yes. though like th- there's video evidence. So it's kind of it's it's difficult to argue against video evidence with it. But like I think like even with with Digged, he he released that tune with AJ um, yesterday, um, and then he's oh, he's posted they posted the um, the song on his Instagram, and then Octavian's posted underneath like um like a. I can, uh, yeah, the rocket, rocket emoji. The yeah. rocket emoji, basically saying that oh, it was a sick song, and then <laughs> the goodie just basically going like cough my Instagram like you, you I turn up, and I can't like even though it was funny, the situation is not funny. Those are the things mm. people need to be doing. You need mm. to make it very publicly known that you don't support those actions. Yeah, and if you see someone in that setting, you need to make it known that I don't affiliate with you. What you did is fucked. Just know I don't fuck with you. And if everyone don't fuck with people, that's gonna. Some people are going to think, I know it's not a good reason to stop you from assaulting someone, but he's going to make you think twice because you're going to be like, actually, this is going to really, really like, hurt me. Because at the moment, like Octavian, like you said, Octavian's still releasing music. That like, we've seen all the evidence. He's still releasing music. Like, what's really going to, what's really been affected in his life compared to what's been affected in the victim's life? So it's just a thing we kind of need to make it a thing where you can't do it, man. It's just, it just can't run. Do you, do you think, I don't know, do you think to some degree as well, with social media as well a lot of these like men think that they can just continue because they will still always have a group of fans that fuck with them despite okay. all of that happening well yeah r kelly yeah exactly. r kelly yeah but that's it i think with, with the fans like they just they look at the artists with such reverence they look past anything in it so the artist can do any dirt no matter what those fans will still buy the music. I mean, there was even that lady that bailed out R. Kelly, like, after all the madnesses. So. Which is mad. Yeah. Like, th- that guy... Who got too uh, much money? Who got too I much even, money? I don't even, Give me like, some change. Like, yeah, that is crazy. Was, I don't even want to, like, go into too much detail, but that guy literally, like, pissed on fucking minors. Like, he took the piss. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> Edit. Edit. <laughs> Oh my days! <laughs> Man, I had to drop it. He took the piss. So oh, no! That's bad. Oh, <laughs> that guy. Yeah. Fuck it what up. were you saying? I was. Obviously... How, how can he? No, but the thing is, how how is someone crazy enough to bail him out? That's the thing, though. Like, Man, I, I just don't get it. Like, people love him. Like, it don't matter. <laughs> You can do <laughs> anything. People. Do you know what's scary though? I know I'm kind of going off topic a bit, but oh, if you see no. how people love R. Kelly, see, imagine how people loved Michael Jackson. Oh yeah, I know. So no, like, that is when people that... are fa- like fascinated with someone, they do crazy shit. So even they, R. Kelly still comes from that era where women still kind of like loving and shit. But I just don't get it because. Oh yeah, even now. I, just, I don't get it. I just, just still don't get it. And do but you think? Uh, but the thing is, even though that documentary. There's so much of it, which is like, he's a creep, he's this and he's that. But then also, 
it kind of tries to paint him in this like he was never loved as a child. It's like, why is that an excuse yeah, why, for him being yeah, why a pedophile? Defending it? Why are you defending <laughs> what she did? Yeah. But that's the problem, though. Like, even yeah. that's that's why a lot of lot of women like they find it hard to come forward with when shit happens because people are literally going to like try and sympathize with the you know what I'm saying with the attacker. If that makes sense, they be like, oh, but what were you wearing? Oh, but like, what were you? What did you do to kind of like prov- provoke that energy? Why were you in a room by yourself with him? And it's kind of that's why it's kind of hard for a lot of people, like women, to kind of come forward, which is fucked. But I don't know. It's just like again, I think in music you need to make it kind of a safer space where they can come forward. But it is definitely harder, harder to do. I think. Yeah, that's kind of what I wanted to go into as well. Like obviously, Solo Forty Five was featured in a documentary as well, and he did like just loads of like heinous crimes to women and like. It's kind of a thing where, like, even the police said it. It's like, it seemed like he had, like, an air on of, like, invis- invincibility about him. Mm. So it's like, this is, it's a difficult question, but, like, do his pairs and, like, the likes of BBK, Boy Better Know, do they have, like, a duty? Obviously, maybe they didn't know, but if now they know, did they have a duty to, like, call them more accountable like, could oh yes, Hell yeah, yes. They, they they did. And the thing is, the I I know like we're big fans of the rest of BBK, but they they never really said anything. They didn't. They didn't say anything. The only person that like, said anything was Jamie. Like Hang you know on. what you know what's kind of weird as well. And and a few people have made this point. And and the thing is, right? I, I mean, we're all we're all big fans of his. We're all big Skepta fans, yeah. Yeah. But he always works with these like wrongers. Yeah. Like Octavian yeah. Octavian was one of Asa, them. ASAP Bari. ASAP Bari. I, I I don't know who else, but I'm sure there's other names. Oh, but ASAP everyone Bar- uh, Yeah. Ian Connor, yeah. I swear. Ian Connor as well, yeah. Ian Connor's yeah. got like hundreds of rape allegations against him. So you have to question the people that's that are around him. Are it is 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 he still in that group chat with BBK? Is he still like I don't know? Is he still like working on music with them in the background? But we're just not going to see it because he's done out here. Like you, you know what I, I mean? Think he's it's even just... in pen now, you know. Who? Solo forty five. Is he not? Oh no, in he's in jail. Yeah. He's under the jail. He's, he's he's got like thirty five years. Well, maybe, well, maybe I'm thinking more Octavian then. But I just. Yeah. I just I don't know I, I feel like the the people that surround these artists should be coming out more on social media bearing in mind you look at the rest of BBK some of them have much larger platforms than, than people like Octavian would ever have so they're 45 what had like one hit basically yeah. but it's like someone should have just said like oh no we, we are separating ourselves from that guy uh, they, a bit like what Black Butter did when Octavian did his thing. They just yeah, went, nah, with, we're not doing it. Even with them, though, they, they only did it when, like, he... Like, they had loads of chances to do it beforehand, but they didn't. It was, it was only when they got pressure to drop him that they dropped him. That's the problem. Like, people yeah, only do it... He was this bag, in it? Yeah, exactly. But people are only doing it when it comes to, like, like if it comes to, like, on social media. So imagine it doesn't. So that, per- that victim's going to suffer for even longer... Or you're not going to do the right thing for even longer just because you want to secure the back. You want to obviously keep your bag, which is bullshit, which is bare annoying. It actually pisses me off. Yeah, no, because mm. the victim, I think her name was Emo Baby or something yeah. like that. She, well, she said, like, yeah, manipulated she, left, she'd right, been and sending center. stuff to like Black Butter for time. And yeah, it wasn't until, yeah, stuff hit social media and it was like, it's kind They're of now and never. Yeah. They're complicit, straight up. Like they knew what they were, were going, but they, they they thought, oh, we just thought it was relationship issues, eh? What? What you think assault is relationship issues? I know, Come yeah, on, man. Please, bro. Well, I'm taking the piss. Well, I guess my question would be, how much of it needs to come from the artists themselves that did it, versus the people around the artist? Because what I would say is, it's one thing if he addresses it on social media, yeah. Which, to be honest, he never really apologised. He never said, my bad. He basically just said, I didn't do it. But there's videos out there that said that he did do it. Um, so 
when when he comes out and he finally says, "Yeah, it happened. I need help," which will probably never happen. Do we wait for that, or do we say actually we should start blaming the people around him as well and just say, "Well, you're all part of this same problem. You should be cancelled as well." Like, what what do we actually say say there? I think it's a it's a touchy one because even though yeah we should like the people around them should definitely hold like the artists accountable there are definitely circumstances where like you actually don't know in it like because you can literally be around a person and yeah like not know what's going on in their personal life but like in the cases we've, we've spoken about they knew so I think once you know that's when yeah now you have to kind of made the effort to say, nah, this is wrong. And like, I have to separate myself from the situation. But obviously when, when money's involved and all of that's involved, that's when people kind of like, even we spoke of a, spoke about a time ago, but with the radar radio situation, like mm-hmm. <laughs> things just get sw- swept under the cover. Mm-hmm. And if anything, that's worse. Cause it just normally like bruise over and like explodes in the end. It just is what it is, though. But I think, yeah, just it just is what it is in that sense. Especially if it's not going to change, then it's not really going to. He's always not going to be in a victim's favor. But I think they just need to tip the balance back into the victim's favor, especially in this kind of industry that we're in. So hopefully it does. But I think if it's not, if it doesn't change, then it's just always kind of going to be how it how it's always been. If that makes sense, mm. kind of. If that makes sense. Yeah. So like. Other than a- accountability, like, what do you guys think can be done, like, in these situations to, like, stop them from happening? Because I guess, like, a lot of the time, because the music's so good or because the artists are held in such reverence, people like, yeah, like, once it's in a new cycle, like, people are talking about it, they're saying, yeah, let's cancel this artist. But, like, yeah, when things die down, like, the artist seems to just get back to it really so the accountability at the moment it doesn't really seem to be there to be honest mm. but, um, I don't know I feel like it needs to be a few things I think again like a bit like what you said at the start G checking your friends is always good I feel like you you have to do that like the the problem is is that you never know the difference between someone's like in person personality versus what they are like outside of your friendship group so like they might be putting on the front and then you don't realize like oh they're actually like this they've got like two sides of them so there's that you just have to like when you pick up on those signs you kind of have to confront it and be a bit like hopefully there's no bullshit happening basically and i think the other thing as well is just just kind of speak up I don't know I feel like there's just so much of it now that I feel I feel like especially these high profile artists they're so protected by their labels management their friends around them their industry friends as well they should all be doing more to hold these people to account especially if they know something that we don't um even if it's just that it doesn't go public but they say you should go and get some help like now I think that should be where where we take things, but I don't know. And, until those sort of things happen, yeah, I don't know what else could be yeah. said. Really, I think another thing that can be done is kind of what was done to Six Nine. So, like, obviously, the way a lot of artists they they move and progress in the scene is by getting like playlisted and putting put on like Spotify playlists, Apple Music playlists. So, if you know this artist is doing those kind of things, like, you should just, like, refuse to put them on the playlist and, and, and take them off, I think. Do you, know, do you know what's funny, though, about that? Mm. When you see how easy it was to finish 6 ix career because he was mm. snitching. Do you know what I mean? So, realistically, it, it would take a lot of collaboration to, you know, finish his career in that sense. Mm. But people were all ready to do that when it was snitching. But if you're hearing someone in the scenes doing, you know, X, Y, and Z, you're not going to cancel him because you don't want to get involved in that. And that's kind of where we need to change our mentalities because it's crazy. Like, 6 9 for, like he came out of prison. Obviously, he was trying to do his, his thing in the charts. No one wants to playlist him. No one wants to work with him. Nobody wants him around because of what he's done. 
but would they have done the same thing if he was like if he sexually assaulted someone? Well, he he did admit to like being domestic abusive to yeah, yeah but that's not why people cancelled him. No, that's what I'm saying. That's the that's to your point, oh, isn't it? Oh yeah, the yeah, fact yeah, that yeah. He, people yeah. knew he was doing that, but yeah, he exactly. was still allowed so to cut knew, through. And exactly, and no one really cared. He even had the um the the charge with the the underage girl. I swear. Yeah, yeah. Nobody cared. He was making popping music, but as soon as he came out, he said, "I'm a snitch." Everyone's like, huh? No, we don't like him. Oh, no, no, we never but liked him. You know what the problem is, right? And what this all comes down to? Money. It's true. The bag. Like, it all comes down to the bag. The the, these these people that make playlists get paid a lot of money. Like DJ labels. Tiny? Oh, don't, man. Oh, pay, Payola. <laughs> King of Payola. But you know what I mean? It It's just... Some of it just comes down to money. Like I feel like you, you could be an artist that's cancelled, and as long as you have the bag, I'm pretty sure big players with hundreds of thousands of subscribers will still put you on. Yeah, like it's it's that's just the way it is these days. A lot of artists that have been cancelled probably are working under a different alias, alias, yeah. and still getting hundreds of thousands of streams a month and making enough money to live on. That that that's just facts, and I think. The, the the issue is is that there's not enough people that are together when it comes to cancelling them. As long as you still it's have it. playlists, you mm. still have people within different countries that might not completely understand what's happening in the UK or the US or whatever, that just like the music for the music, they'll just keep chasing the bag. That that's it. That's just as simple as that. Yeah. So like off the back of that, I kind of wanted to get into like do you guys think this was snowball? So obviously in America we saw there was the the Me Too movement where like yeah like loads of execs got called out and like got cancelled basically. So like could it happen in the UK? I mean like obviously a couple months back it it almost happened with Dutch Avelli where he got caught up in his own madness and like people were saying yeah let's let's cancel him now basically, but. Even him, it seems like he's kind of skated by. So it's like, that's why it looks like for that to happen in the UK will be difficult. Mm. The thing is, we are, we are a much smaller music scene. So it is... I and think I feel it like is... everyone's more connected as well. And because of that, yeah. people are more scared to... Or like more hesitant to kind of go against people, basically. Because I feel like in the US, right... I can probably guarantee that 75% of the rappers you listen to have had some sort of sexual assault case against them, mm. rape case, um, beating up family members. I, I don't care, right? They, they, they've got those sort of cases, but we allow it because we're not there. Whereas when it's here, we seem to be a lot faster to cancel people because exactly what what you said, Denzel, we're kind of a, a community. Even if you're not making the same music, you can probably guarantee you have heard of someone or heard of someone that has heard of someone within the UK music scene. So I feel like it's a lot easier to, to hold people to account here, but it kind of goes back to that same old issue is it comes down to label and management. If they're not cancelling them, then what we do kind of just ends up not affecting them in a way. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I feel like there is a big divide between us and the US and how they approach these cases. I'd like to think that we're a bit more mature with how we handle them, but we still run into the same issues with with like this sort of shit. I mean, I, obviously, this has nothing to do with sexual assault, yeah, but even that DJ Tiny thing, it took them like what two weeks it's like this guy's being a dick like sure, surely there's probably more people doing it that we don't yeah, know about yeah. but just because it came to light they just exit out quickly yeah exactly but, but i think yeah there's way more accountability in this scene but i still think more needs to be done most definitely. definitely most definitely i think if 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 they, we need it if we want to make any progress. We just need to all do more and just be better. It's annoying because we all kind of know what's going on. If that makes sense, like people in those situations know what's going on, so they kind of mm. need to step up and just do better. 
Because it's not rocket science. Just stop being a fucking creep and stop doing shit that you know you shouldn't be doing. And people seeing it should just, like, not look the other way. And it's difficult because sometimes I appreciate, especially trying to navigate to certain positions, that person that you're trying to impress might be the person doing that shit. So are you really going to sacrifice your whole career for, you know what I'm saying, for speaking up? That's kind of the questions you need to ask yourself. But we all do need to have, we have a civic duty just to do better. If not, like, they're just like, it would just be the same old and it would just be all shit. Just be a fucking, yeah, just be a fucking role model. Yeah. Like, just have fucking respect. <laughs> like, yeah, like you, you, you don't want to be that guy that has, like, just, I don't know, has got all these cases put against him, has been cancelled on social media, has got payola cases at radio stations. Where was, and, was like, you, you, you do not want to be that guy. You don't want to be that guy. Hear him, guarantee bro. that someone else that's going to come along is going to think, oh, yeah, that's normal. That's the thing. Here at like, Art Collection, all we're, all we're here about is uh, we're here for consensual clapping of cheeks. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Consensual. Oh, my the three nah. C's. That's a triple C. <laughs> clapping. That's, that's it. That's a triple C. Triple C's. Just consensual. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Okay. Triple threat. We're gonna, gonna put it on a triple. You heard the triple B's, triple C's. A triple Essential C. clapping of cheeks. But we'll we'll do like a a triple H like tribute T with triple C instead. I swear, bro. <laughs> Trying to play the game. To play. Oh my days, that's funny. Yeah, that's but days. yeah, from there, like I kind of wanted to get onto that. Obviously, like we know this, it's it's definitely stuff that's going on in, in the music industry, but. You think it's just a specifically a music industry thing, or is it like a, a universal issue? Oh, it happens like, everywhere, everywhere, yeah, everywhere. And down. I think it's mm. systemic. It's ev- it's in every every facet of society that shit happens, bro. Girls get get assaulted on their way to like work and shit. That is I know, like, it's crazy. That's crazy, bro. I've I've DJed nights where there's been like, I mean, it's a small club. There's only been like what, like a hundred people that can actually get in and get out. And even from those nights, I've heard of some weird shit that DJs have done at that same night that I was at. And you don't see it, but then you're always like, that guy was actually moving a bit weird, but I didn't really think anything of it. It's like, oh, he's a bit drunk or whatever. Then mm-hmm. suddenly two weeks later, bang, he, he was a creep. And it's just like, oh, right, okay. I shouldn't have like, I don't know. Shook his hand. Shook his hand or something. But you know, it's, 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 it's like anywhere where there's gatekeepers or where there's like that that difference in power dynamics, it seems like, yeah, it can happen. So that's, yeah, basically any any business or like corporation, it can go on in it. So, yeah, no, it's, it's cheap, crazy. In it's actually fucked. But that's, it. I think it's just the society we live in. We need to like just do, we need to just change and just put the power, move the power, not, fully with us as men into like women's hands as well because it just seems very much like it is um also is very biased towards us and because it's peak because things may happen to a woman and the first thing people will do is kind of look for excuses like just inherently like oh well maybe she did this or why did like and it's kind of those things are all subconscious so we all need to kind of unlearn those behaviors and then it will kind of translate into society because you know music is always a reflection of um, like the the wider like the wider world and like wider issues, so that's why you have like with drill is very violent because of where it comes from. So it's similar to like uh, like with sexual assault and things of like that nature, because it happens in society is the reason it happens in the music industry. It just happens in the music industry. I believe it does happen a little bit more, but it's just kind of a straight reflection of kind of what happens in society. So, but it's just a bit of a shame though. But we do need to do better, I guess. Yeah, I don't know if you guys saw as well, even like. Marilyn Manson, he like women were coming out against him like just this past week, saying that like yeah they got yeah they got sexually assaulted. So yeah, even the the rockers, them man, them were doing this. It's like it's just oh god, that 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 that's... his love video is gonna look mad now, bro. His whole oh, thing is god. he's finished in court. My life, he's finished. Yeah. He plays music videos. Just sit trust there. me. <laughs> they ain't love. He's gonna turn up to the court looking like the Grim Reaper, man. <laughs> Jesus bro. Christ. With forty, with one one eye like this, one eye like that, and a fucking nah, like bro. To be fair though, his music. Nah, I'm not supporting him. No, 
fuck my elements. <laughs> I thought you were going to say it's music. You know what? Sa- sa- side note, apparently that's like Lil Uzi Vert's favourite artist. I'm not surprised. He, he's got a fucking, a fucking diamond, diamond, diamond in his forehead. In his head, that's, he's oozing blood, you know. Bro. Do you know, apparently, well, he got it, he, he got the implant on like his, it's like a main artery. And if that thing gets, becomes affected, yeah, it, it's, it, that, that's peak. Like, he's probably going to end up with like blood poisoning or some shit. Oh, 20, 24 <laughs> mil for that, you know. To be fair though, that shows how rich Lil Uzi man. But someone searched up uh, his his what do you call it net worth, and it's like sixty mil. So like, how is he putting a twenty four mil diamond in his head? <laughs> finance, like, it, it, yeah. Apparently, yeah, he got it on finance, but nah, he, no, he, he put it on. He, put no, he it on did. He, he's been paying for it since twenty seventeen. Yeah. But why? That's what I say. Why? <laughs> Like, why? Why are you putting yeah. a diamond in I your can't lie, though. He better, he better not go to certain hoods, you know, because you go to certain hoods, man, they will just clap him down for it. What? That's literally a target on your head. Man, man, man will take Bouncing it out like head. Avengers film. What? What? No, he definitely, he definitely bought that on Klarna, man. Oh, <laughs> Jesus Buy now, pay later. <laughs> no, imagine, yeah, imagine, like, someone actually, like, yanks that out of his forehead. It's going to be like Thanos. Bro, mm. people have done worse for the money, bro. People have done worse than ripping something out of someone's forehead. What? And he's from Philly as well. You better be careful when he goes back to bro, the... What's it? To be fair, though, he would definitely have security. Like, mad security. Oh, yeah. No, but sometimes you see him just chilling out in the in the hood, in it? But... Yeah, I just wouldn't do that without my head. And wherever he's smoking, though, he needs to stop that. Yeah, I know. No. Study Infinity Stone. <laughs> mad, isn't it? Oh. But yeah, no, that's what someone was saying. Someone was saying, like, is he actually all right in the head? Think to, to do that to yourself, like, is, <laughs> is nuts. Have you seen those? Man, have so you seen you those? Do like, that to yourself. Have you seen those videos, though, of like people that get those under skin implants? Mm. So they get like a star or like a moon and it like sticks out in their skin. But you know, like he, he did have a, a person like that before, but. He just had like a, one of the small ones like on his forehead, but I guess he just decided he wanted to go go large, large. You see, the source worker was talking about it like a couple of years ago, because he has he has he got the original one here, got like a cheekbone one, and it was okay. like a. Man, he like, thinks he's the originator of everything. That guy. Well, source worker, what? That's a guy, sauce. <laughs> no, he is the guy, but he just. I don't know where he gets his money from because he's not that big in music. The way he's co-opt out it's not the same it's not equating it's not mathematical it's not mathematicating no i get you but i do know like the rap scene in in houston it's more like out the boot kind of thing it's more like independent what's it out the boot why are you talking these fancy terms just say independent why did you say out (laughs) as in like flinging the cds out the boot like back in the day yeah what back in the day? We didn't see that back in the day. Why are you saying back in the day like we were there? What's wrong with you? Just well, I'm, 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 I'm an older guy, you know. Yeah, the, the Denzel, to, Denzel Scott. I've Houston. been around for time. For oh me. yeah, yeah, I forgot. Yeah, you're from Houston, Texas. <laughs> Waste man. That's like that's Houston, like Miles dude. saying that he's from Pittsburgh or something like that. <laughs> oh, oh my god. So you think you'll be from Boston if you're from anywhere in America? This guy must have bust me. No, no, you, Marco. Oh, Marco, yeah. Boston, yeah. why? I don't know. You just look Bostonian. Boston age. Bo- Boston. Boston. <laughs> there, I see it. You look like you earn a burger, jo- uh, Boston, a pizza joint. What called that collection? Boston. Oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> it's called Marco's Pizzas. Oh, I see. Bro, oh, I'd love to eat, open a pizza restaurant, you know. Why? That's best stress. No, you know what? I'd, I'd actually, you know, like, one day... Just open like a little like deli, like a Spanish deli. I, I know that's, that's what you. I'd like to do. And you have the little apron as well. And you have, oh, you bro. Just have decks in the corner. I'll, I'll just do that. I'll do that for the rest of my life. I'll wear an apron. I'll DJ wearing the apron. You just have, the, you have that cloth on his, on his arm like this. You hear? Just bed dancing all the time. All bro, spaces. if I don't start getting booked when this COVID shit is all over, I'm going to start saving for that deli. I, I'll get booked every night there. I'll book myself. <laughs> DJ in the deli. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my word. Shambolic. Um, but yeah, what were you guys saying about jumping on this whole stereo wave this weekend? That app? Yeah, I'm there for it, but I didn't really look into it too much and you put in the group chat. So it's really cool in terms of the fact that like... This sounds like, an, this sounds like a fucking advert. <laughs> well, uh, bare um, people... Advertising stereo. 
No, bear, bear people are getting like um, sponsors from it at the moment. So I wonder if, like, if I plug it, I wonder if we'll get sponsored. So but, yeah, sign up for Stereo. Your advert will appear here. Please get in touch with us at talk to art collection at gmail dot com. Um, no, it's it's pretty cool. It's like you do. It's like a live podcast. It's a bit like um, was it Clubhouse, yeah. but instead of Clubhouse just being like, you know, everyone could just kind of sit there, enter the room, never speak. In this, they can actually submit voice notes. So you can have like two people do a podcast. It's all recorded. You choose like a topic and everything. And then you could be talking about football and then people just like submit voice notes of like their opinions or like whatever's on their mind. Then you just like, I don't want to hear some people's life. opinions. I don't want to hear some people's opinions. I don't like them. Is there even a way to like decide whose voice note you can? I think, I think you can. I okay. think you can block, I think you can block certain people. Cause I was, I was listening to the uh, the Filthy Fellas one the other night, and Denzel was in there, and I was beefing Tigo because I said he's an ex Arsenal fan, but we won't go into that. Um, and yeah, there were some weird people submitting voice notes, but I think Can that's you put part your of the full fun. name on it because I can't. Nah, that. nah, don't don't put your full name. Ah, uh, cool, 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 cool. I I went under an alias, and Tigo was like, "You better reply with what your fucking name is, so I can call you out." And I was just like, "Yeah, nah." I was trying to get get the get the name right there. But we should do a um, we should do like a one session or a couple of sessions this week, and maybe like post football or something. Yeah, that's cool. Because you know United is shit, even though they won nine nil, nine nil. I'm so Bro. pissed off. Oh, you know what, Denzel? I'm actually really annoyed at you because I swear, yeah, that this Luis red card thing is still ah. Oh, I'm I'm actually still angry about it. <laughs> And the fact as well, right? <laughs> Martial, right? He, he he gives me so much pain as it is. But that Bed Narek red card got overturned, and Bro, not the bullshit. Luis one. That's absolute what bullshit. Are you talking about? That, is, that makes me sick. That makes me physically sick. Bullshit. Yeah, I feel like that one was worse than the Luis one, to be honest. Right. But it's the fact that so so the way the way the Martial went was that Bed Narek actually made contact, but. Martial obviously threw himself to the floor. Like, you could kind of see it. They, they do have this thing in Man U, and I don't know if you want to admit it because you're a Man U stand, but, yeah, but you, they you, do you got, throw themselves to the floor. You've you got to add a bit of sauce in it, so HP sauce. What are you talking about? No, that's about? not sauce. That's not sauce. Fam, you got to add some sauce to it. No, 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 that's no, your no, life, bro, though. Bro, if you want to... If you're going to cut through, you got to add bro, that sauce. That is fraudulent. So I'm telling you, that is fraudulent. Oh, sauce. You just got uh, to... Do you know that Bruno, Bruno has, like, I, I saw a stat today, and I think it, I, I don't want to be quoted on this, but I think it was that Bruno has given away the most passes out of any Premier League player the, this season. Yeah, but he's, he's banging in the penalties, isn't it? So... Oh, he's a penalty taker, though. He's a glorified penalty taker. What are you talking yeah, but about? He scores all of them, and we get a what lot, so what can you do? I mean, who was it that was up for... Player of the month uh, in the Premier League. I, I think, think Saka Bruno's might... won it like four times in the past year. No, Bruno shouldn't fucking win it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to vote against him. <laughs> well, he's the guy, man. Are you, are you guys doing fancy Premier League, by the way? Nah. No, I'm not. I've got a life. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. i got a life, yeah. I, uh, you should get one. <laughs> you should get one. You should get one. No, we should actually get one because it is fun. No, no, you should get life. That's what I mean. It's, 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 oh, bro, okay. you know it's like it's like betting. Like you're not you're not in control. You're leaving your happiness here in the control of other people. Oh, but you make it so deep, mate. Yeah, <laughs> you're leaving your happiness in in the form of Martial. So shut. It's true. It's He's got you there, mate. I, def- I definitely there, don't, fam. And Arsenal fans, I, I leave, leave it in, in the Fernandes, hands of but not myself. No, nah, we, we to be honest, Jai and I leave it in the hands of David Luiz, and he still fucks that up. Yeah. That Actually, did you see? Actual, actual did you see the Leno thing? Yeah, man, man did the. What's that? Why did he punch the ball? I said, but... I just don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. He he did, he literally said, "I'm gonna do some Maradona and then hand of God." Just punched it out. <laughs> I love like that, mate. Wait, come on, fuck you. Fucking hell! Yeah, that kind oh. of epitomised the night for you guys. 
Yeah, I don't know. We we've got we've got Villa tomorrow. Um, that be, be an interesting game. match. Do you know who they're going to go? Do you know who they're yeah. going to go? Martinez. Oh yeah, Martinez. Yeah. Although yeah. we apparently have Matt Ryan available for tomorrow. It's the oh, of... yeah, apparently he's actually quite decent. Apparently he's not bad. Yeah, we'll find out. We'll find we'll out. Find out. The good thing it's is like the Luis, the Luis ban and the Leno ban is only for one match. So they'll be back. Like, yeah, it's only for one three. match. That's one match. That's all right then. Yeah, calm then. Yeah, we can hold it one game, even if we lose. But who, yeah. who have you got, Denzel? He doesn't know. He doesn't watch football. When do you yeah. know watch football, bro? Shut up. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you, you I, I watched us, um, watch us beat Southampton 9-0. It was fucking Sunderland, you dickhead. Sunderland. Nah, he, he, he turned it on when they were 5 0 up. He's just like, oh, I love this club. That's <laughs> nah, you, amazing. You're playing what, like Middlesbrough tomorrow or some, some shit? I don't know. Um, whoever we're playing, yeah, we're going to win it. That's all I know. That's all nah, I know. I, I actually, well, I, I was of the opinion that Man U were going to win the league, but I really want Man City to win. I decided. Yeah, because you're a hater. That's why. <laughs> yeah, I can't lie. If I if anyone wants to win, I don't mind it to be Man City. Everyone else, I, I just hate all of you guys so much. <laughs> yeah, I just don't like Man U fans. I, can't I like. don't. I hate Man United. Okay, yeah, now we're bro. facing Everton tomorrow. Yeah, Ever since hold work, Hammers are gonna just want both top bins. They're gonna show Pogba how to play. Oh, you know what? I can't wait. I can't wait for Storm um, to do yeah, that. Yeah, it was actually Southampton, not Sunderland. You. I know, I know. Are you checked? You're a dickhead. <laughs> I'm you're not, dickhead. No, I'm not going crazy, fam. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Man, agreed. You're a dickhead. I was like this. Let me see what... You didn't no, even... No, you know what? I, I, let me not go crazy like that, bro. <laughs> I actually can't wait for Stormzy to do the Pogba farewell, you know. Oh, my bye, God. Bye, Pogba. Yeah, no, apparently Pogba's leaving on the free end of who do you think he's going to move to? What is it? Uh, I think he'll like do like PSG Barca or something. Or something. Like a, yeah, like a Barca. Real Madrid. Yeah. Especially if Messi's leaving, you know. That's still... Where's, he, where's Messi going? That's what I'm a bit excited about. He's not going to America, so... I think if anywhere he'll go Man City. That's like the Yeah, because he can't go to America. They won't, FIFA won't allow that because he would destroy that league. He would destroy... That would be like him playing Sunday League football. Like, no, no, you're Sunday League under nine. Under nines, bro. Yeah, you know who is, you know who is a world class right right back and could be leaving us this summer. And you should take him at Man U. Who? Bellerin. Yeah, world class. No, honestly, no, buy him on the team. I'm honestly We're world class. Models. World footballers, not models. You yeah, have both. He's he's he's, he's both. Right, man, we got my my guy Wamba Saka. Wamba shit, fam. That guy is dead. AK back row G. <laughs> Well, I'm whoosh. Whoosh. Bro, that's actually just double hungry, you know. It Bro, it's ridiculous. I, actually, I just clocked it when you said it. I was like, oh my God. Oh my days. Well, at least we're, we're ending this podcast on a lighter note. Yeah. Oh, but on a side note, yeah, that back row G gets an and pass on YouTube. So it's hard, good. Bro. Enough is enough. Bro. See, I told you that, but what did you have to get the back row G hat? Bro. Back row G. You know what it is? It's because he's just re- he's he's flooding the market, so I have to like it. There's no option. Exactly, bro. That's that Frank Lucas method. <laughs> flood the market with Frank Lucas. <laughs> Frank Lucas flood the market. Um, this year is literally feet back row G. Yeah. <laughs> 2021 featuring back row G. I'm dead.